Hey YouTube, this is Trevor. Today I wanted to share an unboxing and brief discussion of the Terrasic DE10 Nano FPGA Developer Kit. I work in scientific computing, where we use CPUs and graphics cards to do the work, but recently there's been a lot of excitement about FPGAs and their capacity for high-performance computing workloads. Since I don't know anything about FPGAs or how to use them, I figured I'd get my feet wet by ordering one of these kits for about $130 off of Mouser and learn what the hardware is about and how to use it. So let's take a look at it. The box is pretty simple. Uh, the front or the top cover has a picture of the dev kit with a space shuttle with a rocket plume in the background. Around the edges, it's got the Terrasic logo, uh, the DE10 Nano product label, uh, more logo, some barcodes, and on the back, we have a labeled picture of the single board computer uh, color-coded according to the function of each part. Let's go ahead and open her up. <clears throat> Inside, we have some paperwork. So there's a quick start guide, which has another color-coded label diagram of the board, a pictorial reference for what's included in the box, and on the back, uh, design or a website where you can go to get resources and instructions for how to turn the board on and connect it to your computer. So that's pretty handy. We also have what looks like an advertisement for a daughter board that you can plug into the DE10 Nano dev kit. And finally, a list of sponsors that apparently contributed to the development of this kit. We can open up this foam flap. <clears throat> Inside we have a USB cable. Looks like it's a USB-A on one end and USB micro on the other. We have another USB cable that's USB-A on one end and micro USB on the other. We also have, I'm not sure what those are, uh, in the red bag, we have a power adapter. So it's a wall wart AC to DC barrel jack, and it looks like its output is 5 volts and 2 amps, so a 10 watt maximum power. So that's a pretty low power board. And finally, let's open up the board itself. <coughs> it's pretty cool. It comes with this a uh, plastic protective cover on brass standoffs um, and we can see the board itself in comparison uh, size wise we have it's quite a bit larger than an Arduino Uno and we can also take a look at it compared to a Raspberry Pi and it's a bit larger um, so let's go ahead and I'm gonna Move this stuff aside and remove the brass standoffs so you can get a closer look at the board itself. And take off this plastic cover. Then we should be able to see, if we get up close, the FPGA system on a chip is here. We can read off the serial number. And if we, uh, well, I went to the Intel website and got some uh, detailed information. So this product number, 5CSEBA6U23I7NDK, breaks down to being part of the Cyclone 5 family. SE means that it's a system on a chip with enhanced memory and logic. The B means that there is no hard PCIe or hard memory controller. The A6 here indicates that it has 110,000 logic elements, which if they're arranged in a square grid, means that there's 332 by 332 on an edge approximately. The U means that it's an ultra fine line BGA package. 23 means that there are 672 pins in the ball grid array. I means that it's an industrial package. It can go from minus 40 Celsius to 100 Celsius. 
7 indicates the FPGA fabric speed, uh, where 6 is the fastest and 8, I guess, is the slowest, so 7 is okay. N means that it's a lead-free package, so that's nice, and DK means that it's part of the developer kit. This is not a standalone FPGA. It also comes with a hard processor system, or HPS, which is an ARM Cortex-A9 dual-core processor at 800 megahertz, and the system includes one gigabyte of DDR3 system memory. So now we've gotten the specifications out of the way, let's take a look at what else is included on the board. We have the DC barrel adapter for power, an HDMI port for video. This is the micro or mini USB port. It has uh, GPIO pins, so it has a 2x20 header here and another 2x20 header here. It also has these tall standoffs, which apparently are Arduino compatible headers. And it has on the other end a gigabit ethernet port, a USB mini port, and a USB micro port. Um, so I think that that's primarily for communication, not for power, which will come through this barrel adapter. Um, and I'm not sure exactly what those are meant to communicate with, but I'll hope to find out soon. Um, it also has a micro SD card on the back. So they included a micro SD card, which is nice. The Raspberry Pi folks don't do that. So this is a nice difference. Um, and I think that that, like the Raspberry Pi, stores your operating system. Um, let's see, there are also some buttons and switches for interaction. Um, so there are switches here that are meant for interaction, I believe, with the FPGA. So you can set commands to work on those. Um, there are a couple of reset switches for the uh, system and a user button right next to the reset switches. So that's a questionable design decision. And a couple of other key buttons down here. And then there are some DIN switches up here I'm um, not sure what they're for. So <clears throat> part of the reason that I wanted to, or why I bought this kit instead of uh, a different one is this uh, SOC. So the system on a chip means that both the ARM processor and the FPGA are all inside this one package. You can use the SD card to install a common Linux operating system on here and interact with it just like you would with a Raspberry Pi. Uh, but it also comes with example code for OpenCL and uh, the Ver Verilog or VHDL programming languages. So you can get a good handle on running a system with an integrated FPGA and the different programming languages and styles of coding to write the programs, build them, and run them directly on the same system. Um, this is convenient because I don't have to learn how to interact directly with an FPGA for my computer. I can just use this single board development kit that has all of the hardware, um, an operating system from the manufacturer, and everything that I need to get started. And it also costs a whole lot less than standalone FPGAs that would go into a PCIe slot. Those can run upwards of five or ten thousand dollars this one cost me 130 bucks on mouser so i feel like that's a pretty good value this is also apparently part of the intel fpga university education program so there's a lot of resources out there for getting started with this um, the details about the fpga itself and how to use it um, and yeah it's just a pretty pretty neat package uh, they put a lot of thought into assembly and I like the protective cover that it comes with. It means that I don't actually have to make a case for it to keep it protected. Um, so that's about it. Um, hopefully stay tuned to this channel for more on actually using this FPGA. And if you're new to FPGAs like I am, the EV blog has a pretty good primer on what an FPGA is, what it does, and how it works. Uh, so thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.